Hi, this is Clayton with MindOfItsOwnDesign.com. Today I'd like to talk to you about the difference between a couple common materials that are all made with the element silicon. So, what is the difference between silicon, silica, and silicone? Again, silicon, silica, silicone. Now, silicon is the element. It is the pure material, but on Earth, it's hard to find these pure materials naturally. So, it's often found with oxygen in the form of silicon dioxide and often has other elements in it, but... Silicon dioxide, in its basic form, can take a couple forms. It can take the form of silica quartz, where the elements of silicon and oxygen in the ratio of 1 to 2 are in a crystal lattice, meaning that they have a periodic order, and it's a continuous thing where if you zoomed in really close and you could see the elements, if you zoomed in from one area to another area, they would have the same pattern and orientation. That's what's, what defines a crystal. Now, the other form that silicon dioxide can take, and both of them could be kind of considered ceramics, is silica glass. Silica glass is amorphous, and, but it do, it, which means that it doesn't have a long-range order, and that the elements are arranged semi-chaotically. Now, they still obey physics and chemistry rules that dictate, you know, which one will be bonded to which, for the most part. But if you pulled back like you did with the crystal, then you would see in silica glass, you don't see a long-range order. And the atoms are spaced out more and there's that which allows them to be trans more transparent which allows glass to be more transparent than quartz now if if silicon dioxide and then they process it and they purify it and they re remove the pure silicon now you have a material that's really essential for microchips and electronic devices because you can make integrated circuits onto a silicon wafer, or a silicon and germanium sometimes. Uh, and now, why can you do that? That's because silicon is what's known as a semiconductor. A semiconductor doesn't have the high conductivity, electrical conductivity of a metal, but it doesn't totally stop it the same way that an electrical insulator would. Now, silicon dioxide is almost definitely an, an electrical insulator, but silicon metal or metalloid or a, is a semiconductor. And what does that mean? That means if you add certain positive or negatively charged ions of other elements, then you can get a conduction effect of either electrons moving or either positively charged holes moving the other way. Um, now, those materials are both hard materials that are ceramic-like in their behavior, and so is glass. So you have quartz, glass, and pure silicon. But, and you might have heard of silica gel, but what sil silica gel refers to, and that's the thing that absorbs moisture inside of those little packets you see all the time, is, is actually, I think the gel part refers to how they make it in the first place, which is, they ha it means that the silica glass has a bunch of microscopic holes and pores in it, which allows it to absorb water into, onto and into its atomic structure. So that one is still 
silica glass. It just has holes in it and porosity. Now, uh, that's why you shouldn't eat it. Simple as that. Now, silicone rubber is the last thing that you can have, uh, I'm going to talk about, with silicon, with silicon, oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen com uh, combined make up the building blocks of silicone rubber. Now, silicone rubber, the, it has this structure, a repeating of these base units in a very long chain, and each unit has two methyl groups, CH3, one silicon, and one oxygen. Then the next unit will be exactly the same, no matter which direction you go. <clears throat> Now, if you have, you've heard of polymers, that means a long chain, a long chain molecule. And the myrrh is a single unit of this chain. So the myrrh and polymer for silicone rubber is this guy right here. But when they're all combined together, these long chains are like spaghetti in a bowl. Uh, when, it's, when it's manufactured just as a polymer, these long chains can slide past each other to some extent, meaning, meaning that the material might be sticky or soft and not retain its shape. But if you add sulfur, usually, or some other material, that can link those two multiple long strands of this polymer, if they can be linked to each other in a couple spots, that's called cross-linking, or sometimes called vulcanization. So you've probably heard of vulcanized tires, which means that the rubber and tires is cross-linked so that it retains its shape, even though it's flexible and rubbery, for lack of a better word, and, and soft, but still remaining in its shape. Silicone rubber is the same. You have long, change, long chains of this polymer, then they're cross-linked. Now, silicone rubber is a material like other rubbers. It's flexible, but in this case, silicone rubber is very resistant to temperature differences. It can be very cold and relatively hot. You might have seen it as a pot holder or an oven mitt. And it's... By its nature, it's, it's sort of non-stick, so you can use it as in cooking. And it's, it's pretty resistant to chemicals, which is why it's often found in O-rings to seal out, seal containers or seal out moisture. So in conclusion, the three common, or three or four really, common ways you might find silicon are as a purified, semiconductor, often combined with germanium, or as a ceramic in either the form of a glass or a crystal, that's silica glass and silica quartz, SiO2, hard, high temperature resistant, and pretty strong, definitely in compression. And polymer rubber is a material that's flexible. You can pull on it. It can temporarily deform, but it'll go back to its original shape. And it's resistant to freezing temperatures and high temperatures enough that it could go in the oven in some cases. And so that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, check out mindofitsowndesign.com for projects, prototypes, and process design. And please like and subscribe. Thank you.